Hello everyone and welcome back to Rural Germany. It's been a while since I last said that, but yes, we are finally back with another Rural Germany episode. In this video, we are going to start a new town once again, which doesn't mean that the other town that we were building is done now. I just felt like starting a new town back when I recorded the first footage of this episode. And the plan is to finish up this entire town in around three, maybe four episodes, and then go back to the previous town and round that up and everything. Anyways, you just saw me place down the road layout for this town in just a matter of seconds. What we're doing now is using move it to make sure that the terrain difference in the town won't be too big. Obviously, we are going to work with terrain differences in this town because that is just what I like to do. But I didn't want to make it too extreme because that just won't turn out good. The first thing that we're going to place to mark the center of our town is a church. I have to be honest, with every town I build, it starts to get harder to find a nice looking church that I haven't used already in some other town. But for this town, I found this beautiful church that we placed over here. And as you can see with these buildings I'm placing here, I create a little plaza next to the church, which you find very often in towns like this. Back in the day, the residents of this town would gather on this plaza for important meetings and occasionally there would be a small market held. Obviously not the biggest market because this is a pretty unimportant town and if the people would want a bigger market with more products, they'd have to go to a different town in the region. Nowadays though, we live in a world full of transportation so there is basically no need of having a market in such a small town. And secondly, most of the shopping nowadays happens online or in stores and not on markets. Because of that, this plaza is now only used for touristic purposes and by the local restaurant to place their outside tables, like you see me building here. To finish up this plaza here, we are adding a little cross against the wall of the church and we're going to add some flowers to add that extra detail. Alright, so now we have finished the central square, it's time to fill in our first block of houses. Along the street where the church is located at, the houses will still be very close to each other, but along the back street, from this angle on the right side of the block, the houses are much further apart already, because that is basically already the edge of the town on this side. Next up, we need to detail this entire block, because we can't just leave it undetailed like it is right now. So not much more to say about that. Just enjoy the detailing time lapse.
We're now starting on the second house block of today's episode. And as you can see, this house block is also along the kind of main road directly across from the church and the central square. And because of that, the houses will also be directly next to each other to really show that this is the center of the town and a somewhat older part of the town as well. The houses are also a lot closer to the road than in other parts of the town, which is pretty common in these old central areas. What makes this house block particularly interesting is actually the area on the back of the house road that we just placed. There is a huge terrain difference there, which creates some interesting possibilities for the backyards. But one of the houses has a kind of passage in the middle of it. For me, this was too good of an opportunity to miss. So, as you already see me doing, I decided to add a pathway through there and then add some stairs to create a kind of shortcut that leads to the next street. This also aligns perfectly with the central square because if you take the stairs and go through the passage under the house you end up right in front of the central square. What I'm doing right now is zooming in and checking if all the buildings are aligned properly and if it's not the case I move them until they are in the perfect position and I like it. I do this with everything I build, but usually it's being cut out of the video to improve the quality. Because, in my opinion, it would just make a very boring video if all I do is zooming in, moving things around, zooming out again, checking if it's looking good from a distance, zooming back in, and etc, etc. But yeah, for once I decided I'd just leave it in to show you guys what it actually looks like to build projects like this. It has to be said that this was an easy example, easy to get right. Sometimes it takes me even longer to get a single building lined perfectly how I want it. But yeah, like I said, even though it might look so in the video, it rarely happens that I get something right first try. Alright, now it's time to detail the gardens of this house block. It starts off with the regular fence, tree, bush, prop, etc. detailing, but in a few seconds we will also add a really nice looking terrace next to the path that we just built a few seconds ago. It took a bit of playing around to get this corner exactly how I wanted it to, but at the end I'm really happy with how it turned out. And I just love these small little corners that just bring so much more depth to a City Skylines build. What might be a funny thing to mention is that the first, what is it, 5 minutes of the video? up until the first cinematic part, was recorded all the way back in May. After that, I had a busy few months, and when I finally got time to do something for YouTube, I kind of lost motivation for this project. But yeah, somewhere in the past week, I thought, okay, let me just finish this episode, so I at least have one final Rural Germany episode. And then when I started building, I was like, all right, I actually quite like this project again. Let's just continue it. So what you're seeing in this video is a time gap of, what is it, three months? But yeah, I hope that doesn't happen every episode because that would kind of harm my upload frequency. Alright, so let's continue with the next part of our town. What we're doing here is quite interesting, because at first sight it might seem a little weird to have a huge apartment block in the middle of a rural town. It doesn't fit, right? And weirdly enough, that is exactly what I wanted to accomplish. To explain this situation, let me tell you about Mr. Neumann. Mr. Neumann lives in a city somewhere outside of the rural region and is the CEO of a big real estate company. Although he's been making lots of money with apartment blocks in cities all over Germany, he had the idea to make even more profit. 
There was a lot of people in his city that wanted to move into the rural region, but there just weren't a lot of houses available. So he decided, what if I create a huge apartment block with fairly cheap apartments, which would hopefully attract a lot of people from the city to move over to the rural region. Now the only thing he had to do is find a good town to build this apartment block in. His preferred town would meet a few conditions. It had to be easily accessible with both car and public transport. It had to be a relatively quiet town with preferably a low land value. So it would be cheaper for him to build the apartment block. And lastly, it needed to have all necessary services nearby. With the town of Aardov basically around the corner, the services, and then I mean stores, were there. The highway is pretty close and there will be a train station next to this town. That's a spoiler for a future episode. And to make everything better, this was a very quiet town with few tourists and a fairly low land value for this region. So basically, it was the perfect place for Mr. Neumann to build a new apartment block. All right, so let's move on to the next part of our build. Next to the church, right across from the apartment block, we are going to be adding a little ice cream store. And this ice cream store is owned by Jimmy. Jimmy is an Italian who moved to the rural region in Germany to sell Italian ice cream. And it is really one of the best ice cream stores in the entire region. Jimmy has had ideas to move to another town for quite a few years now because of the relatively low amount of tourists in this town compared to other towns in the region. And these feelings have gotten even stronger once the apartment block was placed, which basically just completely ruined the view that his clients were enjoying back in the days. At the moment, Jimmy is still looking for a new place, preferably in Aardorf. So we'll have to see how that story develops. If we go back to the build, we also placed a Rewe, which is going to be the only grocery store in this entire town. That really shows how deserted this town really is. Over here we are going to create a little kind of abandoned corner where nobody really is sure what happens. It looks like the back entrance of the store where goods get unloaded but as nobody really gets there there could be some other activities happening there too. But who knows, what will be pretty interesting to see later on in the video is the contrast between this abandoned poorer looking corner and some rich backyards of the houses next to it. But as I said. That will be later in the video. For now, enjoy some nice detailing.
as you can see, we started detailing some gardens. And although that car that we placed behind the house that is next to the street on the right of the screen looks a little bit more expensive already, the fence makes it still look like a pretty abandoned plot, which is exactly how the house looks as well. The garden that we're detailing over here looks a lot richer already, and so do the cars that we're going to place there. And what the interesting thing is about this is that the exit of this garden is actually straight into the abandoned corner. So that really shows the contrast between richer people that have bought a house here and fix it and just live a happy retirement or whatever and the abandoned parts of the town that nobody uses anymore and nobody cares about. For the rest of this video, we are going to place two more houses, this being one of them, and detail the remaining backyards. There's really not much more to say about that, so just enjoy the detailing time-lapse. As we are rounding up the detailing here, I want to thank you for watching. This was a lot longer episode than normally, but I felt like after such a long time, a long episode wouldn't be such a big problem. After all, episode 30 needs to be a special episode, right? I'm happy I refound my motivation for this series, so I hope to continue it for a lot longer. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like and comment as always, and subscribe if you haven't done so. And then I'll see you on the next one. And as always, enjoy the cinematics.